Welcome to the October 2023 edition of the Presell Pulse, a real estate show dedicated to everything happening in real estate across Metro Vancouver and the Fraser Valley. I'm your host, Ryan Lalonde, and ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome someone whose market trends analysis is so on point, it could give you a pumpkin spice latte on a chilly autumn morning, a run for its money. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, I do love a pumpkin spice latte, um, half sweet, of course. Anyways, today we're uh, filming in the sales gallery of O2 by Celtic in the heart of Metro Town. That's right, Suze. Uh, this project is a part of the lively, it's the thriving, it's the community of Metro Town. It steps away from Metropolis at Metro Town, Crystal Mall, restaurants, of course, uh, very well known, and a simple five minute walk from the SkyTrain, 20 minute drive to the airport, and walking and biking trails all throughout Central Park. Yeah, we know Metro Town is garnering a lot of attention right now, and it's easy to see why between all those amenities, as well as the noteworthy amount of inventory coming to Metro Town, as mentioned in last month's episode. On that note of inventory, O2 is almost 80% sold and stacking up well against the new competitors in the market. Uh, we're currently offering $35,000 off two bedroom homes and a deposit structure of 5% in 2023, 5% in 2024, and the remaining 5% in 2025. We have had a very busy month here in September, I'm happy to say. I love the shameless plugs. Yeah, of course. And of course, as you said, it we're ground zero, right? There's more inventory coming in this marketplace than almost any other market in Metro Vancouver over the next four months. So we are going to be watching it closely. Now, as much as I would happily make this the O2 show, uh, let's switch gears. What is happening on the broader macro landscape, Rai? Now, we've had a regular release of inflation readings. These are showing a bit of a mixed bag of results. Not too much in the way of moving sentiment in either direction. It does feel like many are going back and forth depending on the day. But with this in mind, this month, I figured it would be really worthwhile to take a look at the Federal Reserve's dot plot. Yeah, the dot plot is a chart updated on a quarterly basis showing each central banker's official projection for the federal funds rate. Now, as seen on the screen, each dot represents the anonymous opinion of Fed official from Fed Chair Jerome Powell to Vice Chair Barr. And because it's the average of the opinions of the actual decision makers on this matter, it's a key reference doc for short to midterm rate expectations. And it's just updated this week. Yeah, so tell us the takeaways. Okay, Suze, so uh, here we go. Firstly, the median forecast shows a target projection of 5.6% by year end. In other words, most central bankers are expecting at least one more hike by the end of the year. Yeah, not great, but also not surprising. We've been sharing the expectations for one more hike this year in previous episodes. Yeah, that's right, Susan. And, and secondly, and perhaps more importantly then, is that the dot plot is showing two quarter point rate cuts on the horizon in 2024, though fewer than previously anticipated. Now, the year-end projections for 2024 is 5.1%, up from the 4.6% from the previous edition of the plot. Yeah, and how should we interpret that, do you think? I think that's a really interesting question. Uh, it means that while bankers are still expecting to begin cuts in 2024 from 5.6% to 5.1%, the rate of these cuts are slower than previously forecasted. This is mostly because the economy is performing better than expected, and bankers believe it can withstand the stress of elevated rates for a longer period of time. I guess that's seen as ultimately somewhat of a positive. Yeah, so it sounds like some good news, but also some bad news. While we may not get cuts all the way to 4.6%, we can still be hopeful for the beginning of some relief on uh, the home front. So the takeaways here are that the recently updated dot plot forecast for interest rates show at least one more hike before the year end. The dot plot also shows the beginning of rate cuts in 2024, although somewhat slower than previously expected. I think those are the two primary takeaways that we want all of our viewers to leave with. Thanks, Rye. Let's turn now to the fall pre-sale market. Love it, Suze. Let's jump into it. Yeah, it is a busy time of year on the pre-sale side this fall, and it's going to be exciting to watch. Now, last month, we covered in detail quite a number of projects that have been advertising and previewing recently. We're now forecasting that a large number of these are going to start writing deals this month. So very quickly, we're going to learn uh, how things are going. That's right, Suze. And specifically, we are forecasting 12 different projects across different product forms, mostly concrete towers across Metro Vancouver. That's a big jump from the summer season where we saw usually around four to six projects come to market per month and fewer of those being large scale towers. Now, these developments will have over 3,300 concrete units, over 300 wood frame and just under 200 townhomes to be released in phases in the coming months. Yeah, and we've covered many of those towers, the upcoming Burnaby Wave, in detail last month. Make sure that you're checking out that pre-sale pulse if you happen to miss it. 
Also be sure to stay tuned for the featured project section, which will go over some of the other notable developments. This is including Berquitlam Park District and Magnolia by Intercorp. Now, are you surprised by the level of activity, right? Like how does it stack up against what we would see in a typical year? Yeah, I, uh, this is something that you and I have been talking a lot about. Um, yes and no. In some ways, this level of activity is not that abnormal for this time of year. Vancouver has had a very robust real estate market and can incredible amount of both foreign and local capital speculating uh, in typical years. Now, for example, per internal data, 14 developments came to market in 2020 and 15 in October and 2021. In both years, the number of total units released, uh, they're very comparable to this October. At the same time, these units are being released into a very different environment than in those past. Uh, we're still in the thick of navigating some of the highest interest rates in Canadian history. I think that that's where the challenge of understanding where that puck is going to go um, is right now. So how well do you think these units will absorb then? A robust but typical volume in a somewhat atypical environment. Now, as you alluded to there, the idea of actually closing on these homes looks very different today than in 2020, purely from a monthly mortgage payment standpoint. I think it's our belief that in a constrained market like we are in today, product and positioning becomes very, very important. Uh, you can't get away with the inefficient unit floor plan designs or brand execution or bad pricing like you can in a hot market. So there's going to be some losers. There's no question there. Um, and I think larger players are probably going to continue to push inventory onto the market um, and really do their best to avoid getting any of those items wrong. I think that being said, I expect overall, we're going to see uh, some really strong absorption rates, but it does feel like at some point in the next six months, we are going to see some programs potentially not make the absorption rates that they're hoping for. And so why do you think that is? I think that we've been in a period of elevated rates for about uh, a year and a half now. And, and as rates have more or less stabilized, albeit a, a higher level, we'll see buyers begin to adjust to the new rate environment. I think that that's top of mind for so many home buyers today. And this is already happening and only going to kind of accelerate in, I think, throughout the busy season. Uh, there's a lot of latent uh, built up demand from over the past few quarters. And with the labor market, as solid as it is, Canadian savings and credit levels uh, robust, there is a will and it feels like a way to buy real estate. The biggest concern that I think that we should all be uh, thinking about right now is just at what rate can it absorb? And is it uh, is there enough demand to be able to achieve all of the pre-sale tests of these projects that are pushing into the market? Well, credit debt is very much on the rise. And I think those pandemic savings have dwindled quite a bit now. The fall market is already condensed, given it's really a two and a half month window to maximize sales velocity before the holidays take over. And historically, the fall market in what I would call a finicky market like we're in, now traditionally is not as strong. I definitely agree that we'll see some winners and losers through this. To your point, if you get the offering, the pricing, the strategy and branding, right, you're gonna do well. If you don't, you're gonna feel some short-term pain. And so we're already anticipating a very busy lunar year. Suze, I think that that's really well said. Uh, there will be winners and losers and those that put in the effort and really care about the details, I think they're more likely than not to get it right. Our expectation in October will see a larger release of inventory and a shift from the sleepier year so far, marking the start of a very busy fall season. The amount of inventory is in line with previous years, but it is being released in an atypical macro environment. It's something that we have to pay very close attention to. Now it's time for some project features. So last month we spoke a lot about Metrotown. A lot of these projects hosted realtor events uh, over the past couple of weeks and have begun previewing. Now, while we wait for the majority of these Bachelor Town projects to be in sales, we figured this was the perfect time to talk about another submarket that is beginning to heat up once again. That's right, Suze. Metro Town is not the only submarket that is seeing activity right now. We are beginning to see multiple project launches coming to West Coquitlam. We're really excited about this because we've been very active in that community for some time. Yeah, now let's start with the first project we're featuring today, Lodana by Circadian Group. Now, after their success with Florin, Circadian Group is returning to the West Coquitlam market and bringing in another 123 homes with Lodana. What I really love about Lodana is the location. It is transit oriented, being only 10 minutes away from the low heat station, yet the development itself is located on a quiet tree-lined street, really giving residents that single family community feel. Absolutely, Suze, and I think that that is what makes Lodana such a special offering. They are set in such an urban area, yet focusing on creating family intimate community within the development through their amenities. 
I think another big draw is the variety of homes Loden is also offering. They have everything from studios starting at $400,000 to three bed and dens in their condos. Yeah, not to mention, they also have two and three bedroom townhomes and heritage homes as well. For those that are really looking for more space, uh, it is really a development that has something to offer no matter what life stage that you're in. I think that that's adding to the uniqueness of the community that they're trying to build. Yeah, definitely. What I've also noticed is that Lodena offers integrated appliances. Uh, they're also including air conditioning, which we know is a very hot topic right now. Uh, so all of this is to say it's a, it's a really strong offering in this market and we're excited to bring it. Up next, let's talk about Magnolia, the second building to be released as part of Intracorp's master plan community, Gardenia. Magnolia will be significantly smaller than Lotus, sitting at 17 stories and offering a total of 150 units. You know, I, I remember the advertisements a few months back from Lotus uh, claiming that they were around $100 less per square foot than their competitors. I think that that's an interesting um, message into the marketplace. Suze, where do you think they're going to fare? Yeah, I remember that as well. And I think that competitive pricing was a big contributor to the success of, of the first phase. Uh, it's definitely looking a little different now. Yeah, I'm, I'm unclear whether or not they'll be able to claim that again. And while the starting prices have remained more or less the same for their smaller product, I'm seeing an increase in starting prices for their two bedroom products, uh, their larger homes. We know it. it's the larger products that really help bring down that blended price per square foot. Right. And with Riquitlam Park District launching around the same time, they will have another master plan community to compete with this time around. Now, by the looks of it, sizing and pricing for Bequitlam Park District is also quite similar. So I'm really not sure if they will have that price advantage this time. Yeah, we also know that the majority of purchasers at Lotus were investors. And so pricing is going to play a huge role in, I think, how Magnolia really does and performs. You know, so I'm, I'm also seeing that they have some really large two bedrooms and I'm wondering you know, what type of absorption can you expect for that type of product in this type of market today, knowing interest rates are obviously expected to stay high for some time? Yeah, my thoughts exactly right. Magnolia is offering two bedrooms over 900 square feet, while other competitors are offering two bed and dens for the same size. So it'll be interesting to see what the buyer preference will be. And I think on that note, Magnolia recently held a realtor event and are anticipating sales to begin early this month. Last but not least, we've mentioned them already, Berquitlam Park District Master Plan Community by Intergolf is coming up in West Coquitlam as well. They will be bringing 364 homes into West Coquitlam with their first tower, which will be 40 stories tall. Berk Park is anticipated to complete in the summer of 2028, and that is nearly two years after the time Magnolia and Lodana are expected to complete. So a very long horizon for investors. Yeah, and right now we are seeing that many buyers prefer the later completion timeline due to interest rate projections. So it will be interesting to see how this works for them. Additionally, they are offering only a 15% deposit for all their units right now. Yeah, absolutely, Suze. I, I think on the other hand, we know a lot of people who purchased a few years ago and unfortunately burned recently with those really long timelines and larger than anticipated rate increases. So it'll be very interesting to see how optimistic purchasers are about a longer timeline I will say uh, a thoughtful touch that I really liked about Burke Park District is the fact that, you know, they're offering four elevators. I think it's definitely something that is appreciated by residents when you're living in a 40 story uh, building. I think it's something that many developers have tried to shy away from, from a cost perspective. And so you know that that's going to be appreciated on closing. Yeah, it is definitely a bonus. Burke Park began private previews a few weeks ago and started collecting suite selection forms on September 25th. So let's turn our attention to the resale market now. Thanks, Suze. Uh, we know that fall is normally the season that we start to see the market rebound and actively ramping up uh, again after the summer months. However, it seems that this was not the case for September and that's something that caught our attention. Yes, now uh, it looks like the summer slowdown has continued through into fall, likely caused by the increase in interest rates back in July and the talks of another potential rate hike before the end of this year. With just over 1,900 transactions in September, we are seeing a 16% decrease in sales from the previous month, which is almost as high as the drop that we saw back in July when interest rates increased. Now, we are still 13.2% above sales numbers from the time last year. However, we are experiencing a slower fall than normal with sales 26% below the 10-year seasonal average. What's going on there? Yeah, this decrease in sales activity has certainly affected the sales to listing ratios as well previously sitting at an overall average of 24% in August with both condos and townhomes sitting above 30%. 
The overall average has dropped to 18% with condos and townhomes sitting just above 20%. Uh, in a nutshell, you've got a lot of people sitting on the on the sidelines, anticipating this additional interest rate hike. Um, we're starting to see inventory come up a little, which is why the sales to listing ratios have um, kind of moved more into a balanced or, or buyer's market. Um, but uh, the the fall market historically always is a little bit uh, of a slower market in a finicky market like we're in. We don't see quite the same sales volumes that we do in the spring, and we're really seeing that play out this year. You're right, Suze, that is quite a significant drop. Now, a big contributor to this is also the increase in both overall and new listings for September. We saw approximately 5,400 new listings for a total of over 11,000 listings on the market, making a marking a 38% increase and a 13% increase, respectfully, from the previous months. That's actually quite significant. Yeah, we actually haven't seen that many listings on the market since 2020. And all of this could bode well for purchasers. The market has uh, has spent so long in the seller's market. And in this limited inventory choice scenario, it seems we're finally returning to a more balanced market, giving buyers the chance to re-enter the market. Uh, you're absolutely right. And if sales in fall continue to stay muted, inventory continues to climb, I can't see us entering a market that is more favorable for home buyers. With all this talk about supply, let's also talk about how pricing is looking right now and what it, look, what it can be expected moving forward. I think first up is got to be benchmark pricing. It's remained relatively stable month over month with September seeing a 0.4% decrease from August while remaining 4.4% above the same time last year. Yeah, and I think a lot of players are waiting for the other shoe to drop, either in the form of another rate hike in before year end or in the form of a reaction from the economy. In my view, we're likely to see some more pain in the next few months before seeing some relief in the spring. I think you're absolutely right, Suze. Uh, September isn't quite the same activity and momentum um, that many were expecting and decreased sales activity and increased listings from the previous month. However, despite a decrease in the sales to listings ratio, benchmark prices have remained stable throughout the month. Now, how the next few months play out will be important as a continued increase in inventory paired with a decreasing sales activity could lead us into a buyer's market. Suze, I think that looks like we've wrapped another edition of the Presale Pulse. Now hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out our Newswire. This is a daily email roundup of the breaking news in the world of real estate. It's delivered to your inbox daily. It's something that I think you want showing up regularly. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. And thanks to Celtic and the MLA Canada team for allowing us access to this beautiful sales gallery. Contact the O2 sales team or check out the links below to learn more information about the current offering mentioned in this episode. And we'll see you next time on the Pre-Sale Pulse.